turns out there are some fascinating quotes out there that describe skirmishing in the woods and the use of trees as cover. One of the reasons that so many frontier scouts, spies, militiamen, soldiers use trees for cover was because warfare was evolving. Now it's likely that Europeans learned the importance of going to trees from their native counterparts. Our old friend James Adair, who lived with most of the southeastern tribes in the mid to late 18th century, said that, quote, everyone at the signal of the shrill sounding war cry instantly covers himself behind a tree or in some cavity of the ground where it admits of the best safety. Shrewd minded and desperate frontier fighters from all sides use their environment to further their tenets of war. And one of the most pervasive aspects of frontier warfare was the use of surprise. And trees gave ambushers the opportunity to remain hidden until ready to launch their attack. And if you were on the defense, the trees provided obvious shelter from incoming rounds. Now you don't have to have any real sort of military training to understand the importance of this tactic. In March of 1778, an 18-year-old Daniel Tribu crossed from Virginia into Kentucky and several times in his biography, he mentions the use of trees by either him, the people he was with, or the natives that they were facing. One of their men was a Yankee by the name of Phillips, understood as he was asleep that the Indians was a-coming. He jumped up and cried out, Oh Lord, Oh Lord, and frightened the other men. They jumped up, run to trees, and cocked their guns. Daniel Tribune. Sometimes in order to understand a historic tactic though, we need to jump ahead. In this case, 91 years to the American Civil War where technological advances and traditional tactics created a catastrophic mix. The prior lessons of the frontier, however, were not lost to history. And one Confederate soldier said that there is nothing in this world that is more exciting, more nerve stirring to a soldier than to participate in a battle line of skirmishers when you have a fair field and an open fight. There it takes nerve and pluck, however, it's allowed each skirmisher to take whatever protection he can in the way of a tree or stump. Then on the advance, you do not know when to expect an enemy to spring from behind a tree, stump, or bush, take aim, and fire. It resembles somewhat the order of Indian warfare, for on a skirmish line, all is fair in war. Now this quote fascinates me because 91 years in the future when none of these soldiers had participated in anything like this early American style warfare, they still knew it by its common name and where it came from. Trees offered stability and comfort of protection. Revolutionary War and Frontiersman James Collins stated that the Battle of Kings Mountain that quote, my first shot I ever doubted for I really had the shake on me at the time, but that soon passed over and I took the precaution to conceal myself as well as I could behind a tree or a rock, of which there were plenty, and take as good aim as possible. Now, later in 1791, Collins went on to fight on the Georgia frontier against Creek raiding parties. He said, quote, a man by the name of Ashworth and myself kept close together. We both took one tree. A very small tree will cover a man's body in front if he stands right. Now going to trees could also be used as a nonverbal form of communication on the battlefield. We once again turn to Daniel Tribue who said, quote, and our orders was if they discovered the Indians, they would jump one side behind trees. And when we saw that, we must all dismount and run up to fight. Now, one of the best pieces of art that we have from the 18th century is from a British soldier named Richard St. George, who in 1777 drew a picture of an American rifleman, very likely belonging to Morgan's men, utilizing a tree as, looks like partially as cover and partially as a rest. Now the use of trees as ballistic cover is not in and of itself a free lunch. As a matter of fact, if I want to try to get a shot off or at least be able to see something, I've got to expose my head and upper torso. What that generally means is I'm half as likely to be hit by enemy fire, but if I am hit, I'm twice as likely to be seriously injured or killed. Now folklore is a fascinating topic. By this point, the American rifleman behind his tree had forever ingrained itself in American folklore, but folklore generally comes about when a culture or society need a simplistic way of explaining something. And in reality, it was not the American rifleman that swept the frontier of danger. 
and cleared the way for European settlement. In the end, it was political power and large-scale armies that did that. Now, the technology has certainly progressed, but the use of trees as cover is every bit as applicable today as it was in the 18th century. As a matter of fact, this is something that I have used operationally in the performance of my duties and taught to other officers in the performance of their duties as a way to protect themselves when going after people who don't want to be found.